risky behavior. There's a lot of risky behavior out there. Um, this next video, um, I don't know how to feel about it. Um, you had this guy and um. What's his name? Isaac. And um he just he um decided that he you know he's going to I guess he's from a small town. I guess he's gonna raise awareness in his town um by um dressing up as drag and he's gonna preach. Um in drag so I you know let's just go ahead and um jump into this video I, I honestly feel like people just love playing with God they love playing with the Bible I don't think they really um take it seriously and I can understand why they do it you know they want to um create um this loving environment where um you know god and everybody accepts us how they is and the world is just roses and bubbles and it's just a-okay and everything like that but i don't know um i i think any religion and um There are also rules and things that should and shouldn't happen. So I don't. I I think you you're um making a mockery of the thing which you say you believe in when you when you think it's cute to just dress up and go oh yeah i'm gonna have two ministries you know one where i'm dressed regular and one when i'm in drag and i i don't know why anybody that says they love god or say they read that bible or preach it would think that's a cool thing to do but whatever um let's just jump into the video The best ways to to enact systemic change is through um, joy and carnival. Drag is carnival. It is over the top. It is loud. It is joyous. It is laugh filled, and it is in moments where people on the margins uh, are handed just a little bit of power, and when they hold on to that power for longer than it was intended, things happen. Our prayer statement here is that we are a place where absolutely everyone can experience God's love. And hearing that made me feel at home um, because here we can celebrate everyone for who they are fully for who they are, and I see that as divine. Penny's ministry, it's more of creating spaces um, and planting seeds of change in people's lives, so people who have been told they're unreachable, um, and just say, you are reachable, you are good, you are perfect, you are holy. And in Isaac's <laughs> ministry, it is, in the church, my work is much more mundane. I stitch services together, I tore out a ceiling um, a couple weeks ago um, in our sanctuary. Happy Pentecost! Yay! I am, yeah, my name is Miss Pentecost. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. I ask that the Holy Spirit wash over the words of this sermon, so that justice may drip from every letter, love may linger on every comma, and grace may swell in every space. Thank you. 
video of me leading a prayer in drag uh, went viral um, in Methodist in the Methodist world, um, and then hate just started immediate, immediate, immediate. There was a time when that, like, I would not be here in the church by myself because it was just scary, and so that was really hard. Um, and yet, <laughs> and yet, there was also touch points of hope and joy. This United Methodist Church is my home, it's my family, <laughs> um, and I care about our connection. It's about a story of a woman who sacrifices her privilege and her place in life, her comfort, in order to enact great change, in order to stop harm and injustice. I have a duty to use my privilege to do the do what change I can, no matter if it's uncomfortable <laughs> or not. It's a divine duty you know, that we all have. I talk about my journey and I talk about a hope. So I talk about the past, the present, and the future um, and what all that can be. Isaac also feels passionate about supporting people in small towns. So I don't think he feels like, well, I must be on a coast and with my people. I, I think he feels a passion for serving where he's been raised. I'm so excited to see not only Isaac, but all the 23 year olds I know going into ministry and how they're gonna shift the way our, all our faith communities look. I don't believe I'm gonna be preaching in drag. <laughs> like, I do not wanna wake up every single Sunday morning and get into drag and preach, because it takes like three hours to get into it. So it's a very early morning. It's like one big just joke, I guess. I I would say this, you know, one what he said, he said, um, like everybody's um deserving of God's love. And that is true. But I, I think it's easier it's easy to um manipulate people, right? And you know, you bring everybody into a room and you tell them Um, oh, you know, you're perfect like you are, nothing wrong, you don't have to change this, you don't have to change that. You tell them a bunch of pretty lies, and then um, you make them feel really good about themselves, and then, you know, you hug them, you say a prayer, and you go, oh, you feel that? That's God's love. And really, that's not what it is, it's just that you... um. You know what? This is this story about him is very, very perfect. And this is why people say when you are um, a a preacher or you're someone that delivers um, God's word, um, your job is just to tell the truth. Um, and I don't agree with people threatening you know, his life or anything like that. Um, and so I say that to say this is that your job is to preach and tell the truth and how it is. It's not to destroy people. It's not even to um, kick them out the church or anything like that, because church is for sinners. It really is. Because once you get the word and you get to that point, it's then your job to go out and spread the message. But 
I'm listening to how he talks and it's very deceptive. And it's the reason why some people, well, a lot of people would say, well, hey, we don't want someone like you preaching, right? Because the things you're saying is not true. There are rules. There are things you're supposed to do and things you're um, not supposed to do. And what you're doing is you're leading people into sin by telling them your own little version of what you believe about the Bible um, to be true. That everything's okay and God just wants you to be who you are and he, he loves you and it's you're just so perfect and stuff. It's just like. So I guess stop going to church, I guess, because you're perfect. It's nothing to work out. It's nothing to do. And it's just a okay. And I think that this is why people. Don't trust churches no more. They don't want to go to church no more. I went to a big church and I actually bumped into him not too long ago. But um, I went to a big church and the pastor, he came out the closet. And believe it or not, I thought back to um, some of his sermons. And it was crazy because I noticed the change in his language. It's like the spirit was speaking to me. And I I didn't know quite what it was, but I remember sitting in church and I felt like the way he was preaching was, um, it was like really, really lenient, like, um, Because I'm the type of person, like, when I go, I want to hear the truth. I want to know, like, okay, I'm doing this wrong. I need to get this right. This is what um, God thinks about this, and I need to work on that, you know. Um, I need to focus on that and better that um, part of myself, right, to the best of my capability. But I noticed, like, I remember sitting in church and hearing him preach, and it seemed to be just very like, um, like, you know, just very ex- accepting all of a sudden. It just felt weird to me. And I, I didn't know what I was feeling. And then sure enough, um, it came out. Him and his wife announced that they had actually been divorced for, um, I think, at the time, two years. They just hadn't told anyone in that. Um, he was coming out, you know, he had, he was married, had kids and everything. He had a big church. His father before him had a big church. And, um, so you really, um, I know people say, um, don't shoot the messenger. And they say, well, you know, it doesn't matter about the messenger. It's about the message. And that's a big lie. The messenger really does matter. Because the message changes depending upon who the messenger is. Because you have someone who's facing their own afflictions. They can't really um, deliver to you how you need to be told. You know, if you're living your life a certain way and it's sinful According to and this is for people like if you're going to follow the Bible, if you're going to follow the Bible and you're going to follow um, God and worship, it comes with rules. You don't get to enter into it and then change it to fit you. It was around before you. It comes with rules. If you don't agree with them, then just. Don't be Christian, don't be. Muslim or whatever it is, but don't join up and say that, hey, this is what I want to be 
and then say, well, I'm going to change it to fit me and make my own narrative. You go to the pastor and say, well, hey, you know, I'm having these these certain thoughts, whatever they may be, whatever you feel like, OK, your sin is I'm having these thoughts. And then you have someone like this that also has thoughts that are, you know, this because people have this thing. Well, I don't want to judge you or say something to you because I have my own sins. Right. So you go to this pastor and you say, oh, well, I got these thoughts. Right. And then that pastor kind of relates to you because they say, well, I also have thoughts that maybe the Bible doesn't agree with. Right. But they can't tell you that because then you'll look at them like, well. You in drag, so how you going to tell me anything? Right. And so what this messenger will do is. Oh, don't worry. You, God loves you as you are. There's nothing wrong with your thoughts. You are. And that's what tends to happen in cases like that. And that's why people say, well, hey, I, I, you know, I don't think people like this should be preaching. I mean, it seems like he already had a job in the church, you know, helping out and stuff like that. And that's fine. But to say I'm going to put on a wig and a dress and preach God is like. My God, people don't take church and preaching serious no more. It was a long line of, um, you know, dirty pastors and preachers that grace to seem before, you know, Isaac or Miss Penny or whatever you want to call them, but. I just, I just don't get it. It's, it's just crazy, man. I, I don't even really know what to say. It's just, I, I, I keep praying like people will wake up. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe this is just a one-off. This is the, the only one. But sometimes I'm just like thinking to myself, like, am. Am I going to wake up one day and it's just like everything that you ever believed in is just like destroyed. Like, like religion isn't even sacred anymore. It's just a big joke. Just running around in a red wig and a red dress. And it's just ha ha he he. It's just it's just funny. It's just, it's just sad, man. It really is, man. It's just, it's just disrespectful, especially when you believe in the structure, you know, and, and, the, you know, you believe in the structure, the scripture, the rules, and, okay, boom, I got to get this right, I got to get this. And then you have other people that's trying to come in and destroy the things and just, oh, no, it's fine. You walk in the church and the pastor up there dressed in drag and this is a church, you know. But anyway, man, y'all um, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I love you all. Risky, I'm out. Risky behavior.